Hi, I'm Michelle Paganini, owner of Paganunu, and we're gonna talk about felted clothing today. If you've ever taken a sweater, put it in the washer when it's this size, and it's come back this size, and it's not wearable anymore, you've felted a garment. And that's adding water, soap, hot water, soap, and agitation. It makes all the fibers blend together, and it becomes more of a thick mat than it was before. Now, different garments felt in different ways. Some of them are quite thick and some are thin. I found that cashmere and merino don't really get that thick, but um, woolens like this do. So once you've felted something, it has uh, an edge that doesn't fray. It's very clean. This looks just like it's the cheap acrylic felt, but it's actually a wool garment. When you're felting, you need something that is 100% wool. If you have acrylic or something else mixed in with it, it won't, uh, it won't felt completely. So what can you do with felted garments? Let's go through and look at some examples. Here's a felted sweater. This was originally a medium, and you can see that the sleeve is now quite short. Um, I thought this one felted beautifully. I made myself a couple templates for hearts, got some hearts out of it, and I took this garment that I actually made for Christmas this year, and at one point, I had reindeer on it, and it's now gonna be a seasonal garment. So in time for Valentine's Day, when my husband takes me out, I have the felting on here. I have felted, um, the felted hearts, and I can wash it. It's not gonna shrink anymore. And I sewed them on by hand and machine, but in a way where I can get them off again and I can change that dress in the future. Here's an example of a little bit thicker sweater. You can tell how much this one has shrunk by the way the rippling is right here. The zipper's now too big for the size the sweater is. So I really liked this motif, the flowers in here. That one's actually upside down. And I was thinking about what to do with them, and then I realized I have this gray blouse that I really like, but it's a little bit plain. So I cut out some of the, the flowers on here and position them. You can use it like a felt board, and it pretty much sticks, to see where I wanted to put them. And then again, I sewed them on. Since the garment was already made, um, by hand, I put this one on because I couldn't get it in the machine and really turn it around well, but the others are sewn on by machine. So a couple examples of really simple things that you can do that upgrade a garment. There's uh, another thing that you can do. You can make mitts out of it. In this case, I took um, the ends off of a very tiny sweater, and I didn't cut them out for mitts because they have a, um, a border right here. But I live in California, and I'm here where it's snowing right now. It may not be snowing when this is shown, and this helped keep me really warm. So that's something you can do. Wool is also something that's self-extinguishing. It's not that it won't burn, but it won't burn for long. It's an excellent insulator, so it's really great for a hot pad. I made a hot pad here, and what I have is layers, like an upholstery weight fabric, and then a layer of wool. You could actually put two layers, and then some old denim blue jeans, and I added on some regular cotton weight bias. So there's some bias to close it up. Pretty simple to make. You can also make yourself a pin cushion. So I took a cuff off of this sweater. I can sew it closed so it's tight on my wrist. I took more ribbing, just like this. I wound it around each other, used a doll needle and an upholstery needle to sew it together, and I put a little bit of leather on the bottom of it, and then I can take the upholstery needle and sew it on right here, and I would have a wrist pin cushion. So that's something that you can do, but we're gonna show, we're gonna look at something that's a practical gift. First, one more tip. You can cut out a piece of wool and stick it on here, so if you're using your cast iron pan, you're not gonna burn your hand. But a terrific, I think, baby gift. I just saw these recently. I thought they were great, is to make a baby sack. So in this case, the baby sack always has the ribbing. It could be from the bottom of the garment, or in this case, it's a sleeve. Thought it'd be easier to picture with a baby doll. So you make a sack, it fits under the arms just right, and then you, um, you leave enough room for them to be able to kick in the bottom. So I'm gonna cut open the sleeve, and what I'm doing, if there's a seam right here, is I'm cutting exactly along the seam to open it up. I'm gonna take the baby out. and match this up. So I've got exactly the same two pieces and I can just sew them together. Super simple. I guarantee you will be the only one at a baby shower with this gift, at least for the first couple weeks after this airs. I'm gonna sew it up on the machine and I wanna make sure that I have a pretty big um, stitch on there so that it doesn't uh, snag up when I'm using it. So I'm gonna turn it upside down, do a little pinning. T 
to make sure it doesn't drift as I'm sewing it. You know, I have this inside out, but I actually don't need to do that. Let me show you exactly what's going on here. If I wanted to, I could um, make one of these oversized and I could leave a lip on it. And the lip could be something where when the baby grows a little bit, you could let out the previous stitching and then sew closer to the edge so it would grow with the baby and you don't have to have one at actually every single age. So because it's not gonna fray, because it's felted, you don't actually have to have the ends turned inside out. I know we're used to doing that, but in this case you don't need to. Okay, so let's go over to the machine and sew it. And after you sew it, you'll be able to trim it a little bit too if it doesn't look just right. So it's a little bit thick. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to use the, the um, balance on here. On this machine, there's a little black button. So if, it, if the material's too thick and it won't go forward, I can press that and it will level out the presser foot. So let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's a little bit um, staying in one place. So I'm gonna press that in. Oops, see if I set it. Yep, there we go. Off to the races. Oops, don't wanna go through a pin. I'm actually gonna up the stitch a little bit because it's going so slow. You wanna be really careful about the stitch width you use if you're gonna take it apart because the smaller the stitch, the more likely it is that it's gonna be a trouble um, trouble to take it apart and expand the size later. Sews like a dream. Doesn't matter if I'm a little bit uneven on the seam allowance because I'm gonna be able to trim this and it'll look exactly even. Can make little booties to go with it for a set, for a baby gift. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. It's a little bit uneven right here. So if I just go and trim it and even round the end a little bit, I can clean this up so it looks absolutely perfect. And let's see how it fits on the baby. Isn't this a clever idea? If they have a hat on, they usually don't need the whole blanket and they're gonna kick it off anyway, but this one they really wouldn't. So look at that. So the next time you accidentally felt a sweater, it's not a total disaster because there are so many cute things that you can do with it.